Now, a privately owned spacecraft is on course to make history as it attempts to land on the moon. If it's successful, the Odysseus would become the first commercial craft to land on the lunar surface. Well, the key thing here is that they're going towards the South Pole. So they're going to about 80 degrees south. Uh, nobody's put anything down. On February 15th, 2024, NASA launched the Nova Sea Lander, or the Odysseus, as part of the historic mission to transport scientific and technological payloads to the moon. Approximately four days after the contact with the moon, NASA has finally received some new images from the moon's surface. These images include distant pictures from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, along with some onboard cameras. However, the quality of these images is quite questionable. The Nova Sea Lander became a significant part of NASA's first lunar landing in over half a decade. Not only this, but the Nova Sea Lander is one of the very first spacecraft to join NASA's program to send science and technology stuff to the moon using private companies. It was manufactured by a company called Intuitive Machines, based in Houston, Texas, which is good at making robots and exploring space. The Odysseus was launched on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral, Florida, on February the 15th, 2024, with another spacecraft called the Maston XL-1. The launch went well, and the lander left the rocket about 10 minutes after it took off. Then it started its trip to the moon. One interesting part about Odysseus is its engine. You see, this spacecraft possesses an engine that runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen. It's the first time such an engine is being used in space travel. It's better than regular engines that use hydrazine or kerosene because liquid methane and oxygen are safer for the environment and less harmful. In fact, they also work better, giving more power and control. Plus, we might be able to make liquid methane and oxygen on the Moon or Mars using water and carbon dioxide. This could help future missions by allowing spacecraft to refuel and be used again. Anyways, on the 22nd of February 2024, after some complications, Odysseus made its first contact with the surface of the Moon. Initially, the landing was believed to be upright and successful, but after analyzing it for days, it was revealed that Odysseus landed on its side. At first, no actual images from the Moon's surface were received by the company, but that quickly changed, and Intuitive Machines released multiple images from a separate Moon orbiter, as well as the onboard cameras. In the first image, which doesn't have the best quality, you can see the lander partially. In fact, due to the low quality of this image, the position as well as the state of the lander couldn't be confirmed. The company said, after understanding the end-to-end -end communication requirements, Odysseus sent images from the lunar surface of its vertical descent to its Melopert A landing site, representing the farthest south any vehicle has been able to land on the moon and establish communication with ground controllers. The second image was taken not long before the actual touchdown attempt. Intuitive Machines mentioned, Odysseus captured this image approximately 35 seconds after pitching over during its approach to the landing site. The camera is on the starboard aft side of the lander in this phase. The company also said, as part of Odysseus's descent onto the lunar surface, Intuitive Machines hazard relative navigation algorithms detected nine safe landing sites within the targeted South Pole region, which is an area that contains permanently shadowed regions that may be rich in resources, including water ice that could be used for future propulsion and life support on the Moon. After this, images from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera were released. In these pictures, a white object can be seen on the Moon's surface confirming that Odysseus touched down at 80.13 degrees south latitude and 1.44 east longitude at an elevation of 1.6 miles, putting it within 5,000 feet of the landing site near a crater known as Malapert A. The company added, after traveling more than 600,000 miles, Odysseus landed within nine-tenths of a mile of its intended Malapert A landing site. Using a laser range finding system patched hours before landing, the company said, looking even closer at the image, it does appear to be on its side, as it looks longer than it is tall, suggesting it did in fact tip over. While it does have a very long shadow, that's more common on the lunar south pole. 
The lander is 15 feet tall and 5.2 feet in diameter. They also provided pictures of the site before and after landing, which helps us see where the lander is and what condition it's in. It's possible we won't get many more images because the lander might be sideways and its antennas might not be aligned right for better pictures. Additionally, the company also reportedly removed one of the main ways they plan to take pictures. This is the Eagle Cam, an instrument that was designed to deploy from Odysseus about 100 feet or 30 meters above the lunar surface and photograph the craft's touchdown from below. But prior to landing, the company decided to power down the instrument due to a software patch related to navigation complications. To add insult to injury, it seems like this mission will be coming to an end sooner than expected. The mission originally involved Odysseus operating for about a week before it would run out of sunlight and power. However, new updates from the company indicate that the mission could come to an end even before that. The company added, flight controllers intend to collect data until the lander's solar panels are no longer exposed to light. Based on Earth and Moon positioning, we believe flight controllers will continue to communicate with Odysseus until Tuesday morning. Now, this statement from the company does not specify the Tuesday mentioned. It could be the one coming next week or the one that just passed. The CEO of Intuitive Machine said the best situation would be for the lander to work for 9 to 10 days after landing, even with it being sideways. If it landed on the 22nd, 10 days later would be March the 3rd and the next Tuesday after that is the 5th, which is 12 days after landing. The company lost its communication with the lander this past Tuesday, meaning the 27th of February. That would be a mission of approximately 5 days, which is shorter than everyone initially expected. One of the main reasons for this might be the sideways landing of the lander, which initially was not taken seriously. You see, due to the lander not being in its ideal position, some panels on the spacecraft were not in their ideal position. For example, the antennas, the top solar panel, and the panels on each side of the craft. Even though they are collecting energy, they are doing so in a less efficient manner, which could affect the spacecraft's lifespan big time. One of the reasons for the sideways orientation of the lander could be its two range-finding lasers. During a press conference Friday, executives explained the safety switches for the lander's two rangefinder lasers were enabled, meaning they couldn't be used to guide the craft during its landing. However, luckily, there was an experimental LiDAR system by NASA on board the spacecraft. Engineers working for Intuitive Machines worked to the last minute and designed a software patch to retrieve the required altitude and velocity data from the NASA system to ensure the spacecraft's safe landing. Additionally, the lander wasn't designed to handle the dark lunar nights and needs sunlight on its solar panels to work. You see, a full lunar day lasts 28.3 Earth days, with half in sunlight and half in darkness. Since the lander landed around lunar noon, about 7 Earth days after sunrise, it has roughly 7 Earth days of sunlight left before the next lunar sunset. So, after 7 days, when the sun sets at the landing site, the lander will shut down. This isn't great news because the lander needed more time to gather maximum data and complete its work. Looking back at the landing, pictures from the Moon orbiter suggest the lander may have landed about 1.5 kilometers off its intended spot, near Malapart A. If you think that's not impressive, let me tell you that the CEO hoped for landing accuracy within 2 to 3 kilometers based on the lander's optical navigation system's performance. In conclusion, Odysseus has done impressive scientific work, keeping in mind its sideways orientation and other complications. The lander has been working and collecting data ever since it landed on the moon's surface, which is a huge success. Let's hope the company gets more information and intel on the current situation of the lander, receives images if they're lucky, and continues to communicate with the lander as much as they can. Let's hope for the best, shall we? If you liked the video, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. Also, turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you for watching. See you in another video. Goodbye.